So stars are awesome, and I don't mean awesome in the Oh my god, wasn't the new episode of Glee so awesome sense of the word. I mean proper awe-inspiring awesome. And seeing as I'm still stuck in my little sister's old bedroom for the moment, I thought this is an appropriate place to talk about stars, and so that's what I'm gonna do in this week's episode of... Fun science, fun science, fun science, it's a science of fun, yeah. To start you off, if you didn't already know, stars are basically ginormous, super hot, luminous balls of plasma floating around in space. And when I say plasma, yes, I do mean the same plasma that you find inside of plasma screen TVs and plasma lamps like this. This is what stars are made out of. They're somewhere in the region of between 200 to 400 billion stars just in our Milky Way galaxy, and then there are over 170 billion galaxies in our observable universe. So, if you do the math, there are quite a lot of stars. You probably already know that stars don't really look anything like this, but what you might not know is that stars don't actually really look much like this, either. There are two reasons as to why stars from here on Earth look like tiny little sparkly specks of light in the distance, and the first reason is that they are very distant, so with our naked, fallible human eyes, we can't really see them very well. And the second reason, the reason that we actually see stars twinkling, even though, spoiler alert, stars don't actually twinkle, is that when the light from the star enters our atmosphere, it gets refracted, or bent a little bit, and then we interpret that bendy light as twinkling. In reality, closer up, stars actually look like this. Uh, and this star in particular is a pretty well-known star. It's uh, called the Sun. You might have heard of it. It's uh, pretty popular amongst us living organisms here on Earth. Gives us light and heat and stops us from dying, stuff like that. And even though the Sun is the nearest star to us, it's still about 93 million miles away, and it takes light about eight minutes to get from the surface of the Sun to the surface of Earth. But interestingly, sunlight is actually much older than you might think. The light is made right at the core of the Sun, and because the Sun is so friggin' massive, it takes light about 30,000 years to get from the core to the surface. Right now I'm being lit by the Sun, and I'm also being lit by a ceiling lamp, so the light on this side of my face currently is about not even like a millisecond old, but the light on this side of my face is 30,000 years old. Science is awesome. If you wanted to, you could fit about a million Earths inside of the sun. It's about 109 times the size of Earth, or about that big, there's a picture. But as big as the sun is, it's still only a relatively average sized star. In fact, when we compare it to the biggest star that we know of in the universe, a star called VY Sanus Majoris, our sun is about one pixel big. And then if you like, you can think about how big we are compared to that. Pretty insignificant, I think. Woo! My favourite thing about stars, though, is what they actually do. The light and heat that they give off is pretty much just an affectation of their main purpose, which is to take hydrogen, the simplest of the elements, and build it into more complicated elements like oxygen and carbon and nitrogen. It was Carl Sagan who originally said that if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe, because an apple pie just like everything else on Earth, is essentially just made out of recycled atoms. A star will spend its life making new elements in its core until eventually it dies and explodes and sends those elements out into space, and then those elements go into making new things like planets and rocks and plants and iPods and people. The actual elements that go into making me and you and everything else on this planet were formed in the furnaces of stars. We are literally made of star stuff. And that's one of my favourite things about science, is to be able to say something that sounds as insane as that, but to know that it's actually true because it's backed up by hard scientific evidence. Anyway, I hope you've had fun with the science today, and if you have any suggestions for scientific topics that you would like me to cover, leave a suggestion in to comment, yo, and I will see you. Goodbye. Uh, you've just had the almost imponderable joy of watching Charlie is so cool-like, which makes you like cool. It's the end screen song, won't you sing along with the end screen? And